Hi everyone and welcome back. I captured the Aurora for the first time using a smart telescope, the Dwarf 3. Now I took the Dwarf 3 at the edge of the city. It was a short drive because I'm already close. I went on the hill close to the forest and placed the Dwarf 3 on top of my car to capture the Aurora. And I decided to see first if it will be able to do live staking. At the moment, if you do not select a deep sky object, it will not track. We could select a deep sky object with the Atlas in the region, the north region like Polaris or other star below, and also use tracking. However, I've noticed it will be able to stack at short exposures, probably 10 seconds, even if you do not track. You can take longer, like 15 seconds or 20 seconds, and stack in other software at home if the Dorsey won't be able to stack longer exposures if the tracking is not enabled. However, I started first with uh, short exposures from 3 to 6 seconds and also tried to capture landscapes that were uh, visible there in the lower part and I was able to do it with the Dwarf 3. Most have done short exposures because with longer exposures, having also the clouds, the 3 failed to stack. We'll go now in uh, Photoshop and I'll show you the short live stacks that I've managed to process. Let's start with the first image. We have here a uh, live stack of 21 images of 3.2 seconds captured with the door 3 stacked and also processed in PixInsight and Photoshop. And we have here the Big Dipper. We uh, pointed the telescope towards north and we have here the Big Dipper, a part of the Big Dipper visible and covered by these clouds. So this is a very short plan, uh, less than two minutes integration. I use gain 80 for this and look how good is the image quality. And because I wanted to see also the other stars from the Big Dipper, I used a star mask and made another image with the stars visible piercing through the clouds. So this is the second processed image that I've done using this stack. And we have the Aurora, the Big Dipper, some beautiful mysterious clouds coming from the right. And also we have some dark sky above. I was already impressed by the door 3. I would say that uh, the quality, if you use live stacking, are similar with at least an entry-level DSLR and a kit lens if you stack those images. So very good quality for the price. Having a telescope like the door 3, so portable, so easy to carry with you everywhere. It's so easy to just take it out from the bag and then in a few minutes you can start imaging. Okay, now let's check first the second image. And here the clouds went away and I was able to capture also some blues, some greens, uh, reds, yellows, pinks. I really like here the mix of colors on this one. Here we do have more reds in this image. Look at this uh, quality for only 20 seconds. Now let's see also the last one. Because of the clouds, I went only with four images, 15 seconds each, only two minutes integration, processed again in PixInsight and Photoshop. This image I also stacked in Serial, and it was 15 seconds without tracking with the telephoto lens. I don't believe it tracked, but you see we have very small trails here in the stack. And the Dwarf 3 managed to live stack also at 15 seconds. And here we have the image. However, something went wrong on uh, the processing of the live stack, the stretching. We didn't get good colors here. Let's zoom in, actually. We did add a little bit of tails at 15 seconds. Regarding exposure time, if uh, you won't overexpose the image, it will not be too bright. Then I think it's better to go from 10 to 20 seconds and lower the gain to be able to get better quality. So I've used from gain 40 to 80, but most of the images were shorter exposures because I had a lot of clouds coming and I wanted to capture more images, maybe also to use in a, a few time lapses. I did manage to capture also a few time lapses that I'll show you soon in a few moments. I suggest if you want to have also the background sharp in the live stack, go first with shorter stacks and then try also longer and see how it will look. 
and let's see also some time lapse videos now. I believe this was one of the first time lapses that I've done after I arrived at the edge of the town and you can see how many clouds I had there. So I had to wait more. After this, we've done the live stacks that I've already showed you, processed. To take this time lapse, I just use the time lapse feature of the door 3. And if you go long exposures, let's say 5 seconds or 10, currently I think it's best to also change the interval. So let's say you go 5 seconds, you need to probably change the interval to 5, not to shorten your exposures. It didn't specify how the interval works, like interval from uh, the end of the exposure to the start or total interval from one exposure to the other. So to be safe, I think it's best to go at least the length of the exposure that you take because I've tried once with four seconds and interval was one. I ended up with exposures of about two seconds, I believe. Now let's see also the other videos. The second video, unfortunately, I made a mistake to make four short plans of 30 images and having a little bit break between them, you see we have these interruptions. So I suggest if you want to capture a video and you're not in the time-lapse mode, you want to try live stacking and then use the fits files post-process on the PC. If you do this, it's best to calculate how many images you want for the time-lapse and finish the plan. Because if not, you'll have cuts like this in your videos. Okay, now let's see the next one. And here we have another short time-lapse of 5 seconds. I also use uh, raw fits and process them on the PC. Here I do have an important observation to make. It's very, it's important also to take dark frames if you want also to calibrate in post-processing or if you're doing live stacks and you want the live stacks to be calibrated. If not, it will be harder to remove these hot pixels. You can do it in programs like Photoshop, but it will take extra time. And more clouds started to come after and I decided to capture also more uh, of the landscape in this time lapse, the clouds and the aurora behind. Here I went uh, 5 seconds and gained 80. If I was not pressed on time, I think I would have gone 15 seconds here or maybe 20 seconds. So we could improve here the image quality and the signal to noise ratio uh, by increasing the exposure time and lowering the gain. In at 5 seconds, it was also less light on the sky. We see here the image, uh, the time lapse is more noisy. Also, I did process it more after it was already saved in MP4 and probably that also affected a little bit the image quality and the noise levels. Well, my friends, this is how I captured the Aurora using the Door 3 Smart Telescope. I hope you find the video useful. And if you do, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. And of course, if you are interested in buying the Dorsey Smart Telescope, affiliate links are available in the video description. I want to give big thanks to all the channel members that are supporting the channel. And if you want to support the channel, you can hit that join button. And also get access to my astrophotography data, like data captured with the Dorsey Smart Telescope. Thanks for watching, don't miss the future videos. And until next time. Clear sky.